Welcome to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette, with your host Steve Garrett, MC and DJ at one of the largest Corvette weekends in the country, Corvette Fun Fest, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 40 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Mid-America Motorworks. Car show season is here. Get your Corvette ready by shopping over 60,000 Corvette-specific parts and accessories at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. You can listen to Corvette Today on all podcast platforms. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say Alexa or Hey Google, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. Also, visit the Corvette Today website. It's CorvetteTodayPodcast.com. And while you're there, make sure you visit the Corvette Today merchandise store. You can also sign up for Corvette Today emails, notifications, and updates at CorvetteToday.ck.page. And don't forget, join the Corvette Today Facebook group. We have over 3,600 members, and I'd love to have you as a member as well. And don't forget about the YouTube channel now for Corvette Today. See all your favorite Corvette Today podcasts now on YouTube. First, I'd like to thank our flagship sponsors of Corvette Today, Aerolari Wheels, a true forged wheel with over 20 unique design styles to choose from for your C8 and wide-body versions of the C7, C6, and C5 Corvette. It's an absurd value starting at only $19.88 for a set of four fully forged wheels. And now use the new promo code CT111, that's CT111, and get $100 off your purchase. Visit aerolari.com, that's A-E-R-O-L-A-R-R-I.com, with the new promo code CT111 for your $100 discount. Also, midenginecorvetteforum.com, the forum that focuses on the new mid-engine C8 Corvette. Meet a lot of fellow Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at midenginecorvetteforum.com. Also, a shout-out to canadiancorvetteforum.com, welcoming Corvette owners from around the world. It's time to get the latest Corvette news and headlines with my pal, Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. As you know, Keith is here twice per month, every other week, to keep you current and up-to-date on what's happening with America's sports car. Keith, welcome back. You and I are both fresh back from the NCM Michelin Bash. How are you doing? Doing great this morning, Steve. Great to see everybody there. I know we're going to do a little update a little bit later in this segment, but just a fantastic event. Can't get enough of both the Corvette team and talking to them, all the staff at the NCM, and then just the opportunity to see friends who are, in many cases, a lot like family. Glad to be back. It was just a great trip. It was a great trip. It was great to see all the people that love Corvette today, either watch it or listen to it on the podcast, and meet some new friends as well. Yeah, that's another thing, Steve. Let me say this. I can't tell you how many people have come up and said, hey, I listen to you guys on the podcast. That's awesome. It's really having an impact. We thank all of you out there. Continue listening. Share it with your friends. This is the only podcast dedicated to Corvettes. It's just a great opportunity, both for me as well as Steve, to reach our audiences. Thank you again so much for coming up and saying hello to us. Absolutely right. Well, buddy, as we always do in section number one, let's start and talk about Corvette production at the Bowling Green Assembly Plant. Well, as we all know, the Corvette production line was shut down last week due to a parts-related shortage. We were told definitively that production will start on Monday, May 2nd, so it'll start today. When it does start up, we're looking at the VIN count 22,700. So we've got about three weeks remaining for 2022 production. That's, of course, if GM does extend that last week as it did prior, we're almost certain that they are going to do that because they do have to finish up those order books and get those cars out to those 2022 model year buyers. We're looking at the 2023 Stingrays to start the week of May 23rd, if they do extend that. We're constantly going into these part shortages, and I know that's the next point up on this segment. But what's interesting, Steve, is that this shutdown, we learned that it was not chip-related. And I think that's one of the first times in recent memory that a shutdown wasn't chip-related. We were actually told that it could be a chassis component. I can't really go into exactly what that might be. It's something that shows that we're still getting chips and that stuff's being prioritized towards us, even though the constraint lists are still pretty active there. During the NCM bash, we did hear from Assistant Plant Director Nora Roper, who offered an update. You know, was very positive about the future updates and saying GM is really working hard to ensure that they have all the parts that they need. I don't want to say we're continuing to come out of it, but, you know, it seems like people are positive about production up there. The workers that we talked with that work on the line, as well as what we heard. I want to say that things are still looking good for the summertime. You know, obviously anything could happen at that time. 
keeping fingers crossed that we can knock out a whole bunch of weeks again without any further delays. I'm surprised, Keith, that it was a chassis shortage, not a random parts shortage, because usually that's what's happening. But it was nice to see, like you said, that there wasn't a shortage due to chips. Yeah, exactly. Something a little bit different. So we're making news there, aren't we? Absolutely. Also, General Motors President Mark Royce dropped a bomb. And I think we always knew about what was happening with this, but he made it official. And he said that there will be electrified Corvettes coming in the near future as soon as next year, as a matter of fact. Yeah, this was a big bomb going off in the world. Boy, you couldn't get out of that news. This happened a week ago, Monday. Mark Royce went on CNBC and announced that both an electrified Corvette for next year will come, and then a fully electric Corvette will be coming in the future. And along with that news, we got a video showing a C8 prototype. Is that an E-Ray prototype? We don't know about the naming yet. And Mark Royce said names and descriptions and all that stuff will come later. But this video shows the C8 prototype in the snow, and a side view shows that the front wheels are spinning faster than the rear wheels, which shows you that those front wheels are being powered separately from the rear wheels. At the same time, we do have engine noises. There's a lot of people freaking out about no engines and stuff. Uh, no, this one will definitely have an engine. We obviously think that it's the LT1, the 495 horsepower V8 that's in the Stingray. So I think that's all bodes well. I mean, you could hear it. You could see the exhaust fumes off the side back, you know, the little waves in the air. Boy, it was really exciting, though. Uh, as someone who has a name on a list, I'm pretty excited about this car. Most likely, this is a 2024 model going to be offered summer of 2023. And as for a fully electric Corvette, my guess on the C8 timeline would put that car probably coming towards the end of the decade. I would think 2028 model year at the soonest. Absolutely right. And I was so excited about it because watching that and listening to it, it was so exciting. We're going to have two new cars here in the next two years. And we got the Z06 coming. It's just amazing, yeah. Of course, there was some other news that we'll get to later. The pipeline's full of product. Although we think we have a handle on it, I'm certainly sure that there's going to be some surprises to what we thought we knew to what actually comes out. It is an exciting time for Corvette buyers. The Corvette team members, I'm sure, are just having a good time as well as developing these new products. Put on your shades. The future is bright for Corvette. Yes, it is. Also, <laughs> also, a lawsuit was filed against General Motors for a Chevy shake issue, and this is for C7 Corvettes from model year 2015 through 2019. Yeah, if you thought the Chevy Shake was America's latest dance craze, we're sorry to disappoint. <laughs> it's actually a vibration issue. We noted in Cadillacs, GMC, and Chevys, it looks like these are cars with V8s. We're not sure if this is partly due to a combination of some of the transmissions that are out there. We haven't seen a lot, but there's videos out there of these cars driving down the road. A guy describes it as, it's just like you're vibrating pretty heavy where it's like driving over rumble strips. And if you can imagine driving 70 miles an hour down the highway, one of the videos shows a Coke in the cup holder. There's a lot of vibration there. So we know the lawsuit does cover certain vehicles, including the 2019 Corvette. This is actually, the, I think, the second one that is after this vibration issue, the second lawsuit that's after this vibration issue. So we have to wait and see how this all sorts out. But it's, again, just another thing that owners are dealing with. And we wish that GM would be able to come clean and figure out what exactly is the issue here. Definitely. And if you're someone like me who likes the technology side of Corvette, Cisco Wireless has a backhaul technology that allows GM engineers to monitor pre-production wise testing in real time. I thought this was so cool, Keith. Yeah, so imagine these cars running around 100 miles an hour faster at Milford, and they use the wireless data transfers to send back hundreds of data streams to a data center where they can capture everything and then they can analyze it. But, you know, if you're driving over 100 miles an hour and you have a crappy wireless connection, you know, you're going to lose that data. So this just allows multiple GM test engineers at the GM Milford Proving Ground to monitor those channels and then capture them all. Technology goes, it's always growing, and this is just going to help speed along the development of these new cars a little bit faster because all that data is able to be captured in real time and then they can make decisions on that faster as opposed to having to download and then do it a little bit slower that way. So good stuff coming from Cisco and GM. Absolutely right. Also, Keith, let's talk a little bit more about the birthday bash. It was so much fun. It seemed like attendance was the biggest we've seen in quite some time. 
Yeah, you know, I almost want to say that it, it it was one of the biggest bashes that I've been to in recent years. I've been attending the bash since about 2009, 2010. Only missed it for the COVID shutdown. Great to be back there. It was a different format, and I loved it. They put basically everything out in the front of the museum. They had big tents, vendors out there, and then the Chevrolet display. But the new format also allowed the R8C deliveries to continue inside the museum. So we heard all the clap outs over the weekend as new buyers were picking up their cars. And it was exciting to see them. We had 40 or 50 GM Corvette team members there. Everybody designed chassis, engineering. Obviously, the big guns were there. Harlan Charles, vehicle chief engineer Josh Holder, Kirk Denyon, executive design director, and then just a ton of people there. So great to talk to those people. As far as cars go, we have a 70th anniversary editions. We had both versions there for the Stingray. We had three Z06s plus a cutaway car and a cutaway engine display. So really exciting stuff. I think the only disappointment for the GM display was obviously the lack of the Z06 dealer tour display. What they showed was basically the accessories and cases and then what was on the cars, but we couldn't see all the different wheels wheels and those kinds of things. There wasn't that Chevy shake. There we go with the Chevy shake. That's yep, it. It's exactly. the Z06 shake table that you would stand on and feel those vibrations like you would feel when sitting in the car. That was a little bit disappointing, but everything else on top of that was just a fantastic time. The museums really come alive, too. It's it's amazing what a good year and a half would do being away from that place and then coming back and seeing all the updates and changes. I think a lot of that's due to Sharon Bronner's leadership there over the last seven or eight months. Neat to see it. You're walking around all day, and then at the end of the day, they got a guy playing guitar inside the Stingray Cafe, and you can pick up a little cocktail. A nice way to end a good day. So congratulations to everybody up there that put Put on basically a hell of a show. I just can't wait to go back next year. Absolutely right. I enjoyed it myself, and I think, like you said, Keith, it was one of the best bashes we've ever been to. I got into the Stingray Grill. I got one of the big Stingray burgers, and that was fantastic. It has a slice of apple in it, which was really, really good. You think, huh, a burger with an apple slice? That's different, but it was really, really good. Yeah. Uh-huh. I enjoyed all of the seminars that were done. As a matter of fact, podcast from last week, Jordan Lee was there, and he gave a talk about the engine for the Z06. And Jordan Lee is the global chief engineer for GM for small block engines. So he does all engines, whether it's Cadillac or Chevrolet, but it was great to hear him talk. I really enjoyed the guys from Mobile One and Michelin. As a matter of fact, I met the guys from Michelin. They are going to be on a future podcast. Those guys were really excited, and they loved the podcast, which I thought was fabulous. And it was also great to see some of our Corvette Today family of advertisers like American Hydrocarbon. So it was a lot of fun. Thank you to everybody that came up and said hello. We love the podcast. We love the YouTube videos. It was great to see everybody. Yeah, I'll say this real quick. As we're wandering around, both you and I and others, we're collecting all kinds of information. We're really there as to meet people, talk, find out more. But then also, we're going to try to convey as much as that here in the next week or so from what we learn. Please stay tuned. Visit Corvette Blogger again this week as we unroll some of that info that comes out. Sounds good, Keith. Well, let's take our first break, buddy. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Corvette racing and Corvette rumors here on Corvette Today. The Radiator Grill Store offers protection for your C8's front radiators and side intakes. They also carry front strut tower covers to prevent rusting and pooling water, all with do-it-yourself installation. Get 10% off your total purchase with promo code CT10. See the full line of products at radiatorgrillstore.com. MidAmerica Motor Works has been the industry leader and aftermarket supplier and manufacturer of Corvette replacement parts and accessories since 1974. We have what you need for all years and generations of Corvette. Whether you need a door panel or a seat cover for your C1 Corvette, or the latest shirt, jacket, hat, or lifestyle accessory to complement your new C8, you can get it at MidAmerica Motorworks. So if you're restoring, repairing, replacing, or simply researching your Corvette, MidAmerica Motorworks is the place to go. Visit our website at mamotorworks.com and shop Corvettes by generation or specific year. Or call us Monday through Saturday, toll-free at 800-500-1500 and talk to one of our Corvette experts to help you get the right part or accessory. Pursue your passion with MidAmerica Motorworks. 
VetFinders.com is the Internet's original Corvette classified ads website with classified ads starting at just $25. And every ad runs until your Corvette is sold. If you're in the market for a Corvette, VetFinders.com has over 500 Corvettes for sale from all around the USA and Canada and covering all eight generations. Visit VetFinders.com, the Internet's destination for buying and selling Corvettes. That's V-E-T-T-E Finders.com. And now, back to Corvette Today with your host and my husband, Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Mid-America Motorworks. Car show season is here. Get your Corvette ready by shopping over 60,000 Corvette-specific parts and accessories at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. We keep you current and up-to-date on what's happening with America's sports car. In this section, we're going to talk about Corvette racing and Corvette rumors. First, let's start with racing. Keith, another Another balance of power penalty for Corvette racing ahead of Laguna Seca this weekend. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Laguna Seca is the fourth race on the 2022 calendar. We've had six BOP updates affecting Corvette that we've counted so far this season. It's kind of crazy. We get it. We're running a waiver. We don't have a real GT3 car. All the other cars in the class are GT3s. They've been tweaking it. I think they might have turned up the volume a little bit too much during Sebring, which allowed (laughs) us to get that class win. And then also we got the third place finish at Sprint at Long Beach. It's just one of these things. I want to say we should just be happy we're racing. That's part of it. Corvette, we never lead from behind. We have 20 kilograms of weight added. We're now carrying a total of 55 kilograms in the ballast box. We had qualifying Saturday. Jordan Taylor did the driving. We came in sixth. Sounds pretty good until you realize there's only six cars in class. All the practice sessions, we've been dead last. If there's any kind of strategy to this race, it's going to have to come in trying to be very selective and how we can get up there and move. And maybe we have to get off the strategy of the other cars, maybe do an early pit or a later pit, something that will switch things things up somehow to give us a shot for a podium not really actually counting a whole lot this race here just because of these BOP updates and where we've been running this practice the race is actually late Sunday we'll have the updates with the results that sounds good also I was excited to see this the new Z06 GT3R is going to hit the track for testing in September man that car looks like a monster it does. So they've been working on this. Laura Clauser did a update with Racer Magazine. She said that recently they've completed their wind tunnel design testing, that the actual GT3R should now hit this track sometime in September for its first testing, for its first on-track real-time testing. Pretty exciting there. These are going to be customer cars that are being sold to racing teams. What's still unknown with all the different racing organizers, especially the Le Mans guys, is if GM will be able to field a factory back pro team in competition. Competition. That's still up in the air. We've split our strategy this season so we can race at Le Mans with our car. So that's why we've got the one car racing over in the WEC. But there's still just so much unknown in the future. I, I've actually talked to a couple of diehard fans at the Bash. They're nervous and we're nervous too about what might be happening. Sometimes change isn't all that good, right? Right. But we're working on it. They've got the car going. It's just another Corvette product that's going to be out there and that's going to be pretty cool to see. Keep fingers crossed and we'll see what happens. Do you have any idea or guesstimation what that car is going to cost? I have no idea. There's some talk about, well, can you compare it to the Porsche's pricing? And I don't think that's even a apples to apples comparison. Yeah. Is it quarter million? Is it more than that? I really don't know. It'll be interesting to see. It's not going to be a $60,000 car, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> In the rumor section, this was interesting. I saw that tornado damaged C8s are being parted out and sold on eBay. What's going on with that? There was a lot of questioning about what was we were going to see happening with those tornado damaged cars. As you know, the tornado struck the plant in December, caused a hole in the roof and a fire on top. Water came into the plant, so they ended up scrapping about 122 vehicles. We know that these cars were held back behind the plant, and they all had X's on the windshield. Nora Roper in her NCM seminar talked about how they looked at all these cars with carpet and the water damage and such. There was a lot of parts that probably weren't damaged all that much. We learned that these cars are being parted out by Stricker Auto Parts in Batavia, Ohio. And we've seen everything, wheels, steering wheels, hardtop convertible assemblies. You go through the eBay, you see that the cars have an X on the windshield. And we actually caught one of the cars, they're able to get electrical to it, and it showed it had zero miles on the odometer. So obviously these were new cars that are being parted out. We caught a recent statement about this from a GM representative who said that we have contracted with an outside vendor to 
salvage certain parts from vehicles that were affected during the tornado that impacted the Bowling Green assembly plant. This was done in an effort to remarket as many of the salvageable parts as possible. I actually got this story. It came to me from a reader who said, hey, I'm thinking that these are the tornado parts. He actually bought a set of wheels that were on there. And of course, wheels aren't damaged by water and rain. So why not buy them up? Good stuff out there. And even Jalotnik was saying, I wonder if you could build a whole Corvette out of all these parts on eBay. Right. Pretty interesting stuff. Like I said, with that guy that bought the wheels, there was a stated price and they took a best offer. So keep that in the back of your mind if you see any of these out there. They are accepting best offers on these parts. Definitely don't let that slip. You down. And during the bash, Nora talked about some of these cars. Just think about it, everybody. A December tornado. What is the world coming to, right? In Bowling Green, <laughs> Kentucky. I couldn't believe it. Right. Finally, Keith, we had a new wide body C8 prototype seen with heavy camo and new wheels. And we got some video of that. That was pretty cool. Yeah, so there's a lot of questions of maybe this is a ZR1 prototype. We do see that it's got the heavy black camos back on. It's a new camo design, though. There's now mesh where the side intakes are. And because Chevy's got this wide body now that's out there with the Z06, and we've all seen it, they can do a little bit more of a lighter camo in certain areas so that they can get the air that they need into the car. It's unique because looking at the wheels, they've got the black wheel covers back up on there, so you can't see the rims that design themselves. But through the holes, you can see that these are new wheels. These are not currently offered on any other C8. Corvette that's out there. So it does tell us that this is something different. Again, it is a wide body. It's got the huge tires on the back. As far as the timeline for the ZR1, obviously with the E-Ray now announced for 2024, we're thinking it's a 2025 model, possibly offered summer of 2024. The rumor is that you're going to take the LT6 and put twin turbos on it. That's certainly one way to do that. And it could have a horsepower upwards of 850. That's amazing. And just think about it. <laughs> when camo for the Corvette is all the rage, that's very, very cool. Yes, it is. <laughs> Buddy, let's take our final break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the lighter side of Corvette here on Corvette Today. Are you ready for a better insurance policy without the Corvette tax? With agreed value protection, the value of your collector vehicle will never change. Plus, you'll save money. Get a quick quote at ncminsurance.com. Hey, honey, are you awake? Mm, I am now. I can't sleep. Since turning 50, I keep dreaming of a red door and a blue door, somehow knowing there are only choices for retirement. Okay. Through the red door, we outlive our money. We have to rely on our kids. We're stuck on a fixed income. It's terrifying. Yeah, that would suck. But through the blue door, our money outlives us. We retire on our terms. Our kids stay our kids, not our caretakers. We make work optional. Yes, that's much better. That's what I I want to, but what do we do? We call True Wealth and Company at 913-653-8783. They specialize in helping successful people make work optional. They're our fiduciary Blue Door personal wealth managers. Hey, where are you going? It's 3 a.m. I can't sleep. I'm going to check out True Wealth and Company online at retirewithtrue.com. That Blue Door is going to be our retirement. 913-653-8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth and Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. American Hydrocarbon is your one-stop shop for custom interior, exterior, and engine bay items for your C4 through C8 Corvette. We can help you create a custom look for your Corvette with carbon fiber or 10 different color patterns and styles. Whether it's a custom-made engine cover for your new C8 mid-engine Corvette or custom-made C4 interior upgrades, American Hydrocarbon can help you transform your Corvette into a best-in-class show car. And now we're proud to announce that we can produce and distribute officially licensed GM products for the C8 Corvette. That includes the front splitter, side skirts, engine appearance panels, and engine fluid caps. Plus, we now also carry the C8 Speedline side skirts along with the engine appearance package and high wing. Our products have been featured in VET and Corvette magazines. Give us a call, 813-476-5638. Visit our updated website at AmericanHydrocarbon.com or email us at pat at AmericanHydrocarbon.com. Let us help you make your Corvette the car you've always wanted it to be. American Hydro hydrocarbon stretch the life of your corvette's paint with nova stretch the performance protective cover from bugs to rock chips nova stretch covers protect your c5 through c8 corvette utilizing stretch fabric technology and an innovative fastening system for quick installation and easy removal and storage 
Made in the USA for a tailored fit, the patented design and breathable mesh protects your Corvette without rubbing or chafing the paint like traditional covers. And unlike clear film or old-time car bras, Nova Stretch provides full front-end coverage including the grill, keeping radiators and heat exchangers clean and debris-free. Visit NovaStretch.com and use the code CORVETTETODAY15 to get 15% off your order. Protect your Corvette with Nova Stretch. This is the Corvette Today podcast with Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks once again for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Mid America Motor Works. The car show season is here, so get your Corvette ready by shopping over 60,000 Corvette specific parts and accessories at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. Don't forget, if you want a deeper dive into any of these stories we do, you can always go to CorvetteBlogger.com for all the details. In this third and final segment, we talk about the lighter side of Corvette. Keith, the C8 Z06 will allow you to customize launch control. That was something that I thought was so darn cool. Yeah, this came out of the NCM seminar with Josh Holder, a vehicle chief engineer who unveiled this latest update. Just a new feature I don't think anybody knew about. Essentially, with the Stingray, you click a couple buttons, you put in the launch control, and you launch around 3,500 RPMs. The default RPM launch for the Z06 is at 4,500, and we learned that you can actually turn it up or turn it down based on what your track conditions are. So the higher the RPM selection, obviously, the greater the torque output, which will lead to faster acceleration times, right? The customizable aspect of it, I think, is pretty cool. And just imagine if you're at a race prep drag strip where traction is at a premium, boy, you're just going to be able to turn that thing up to about 5,000 and really go. So that's pretty exciting there. But you know what was interesting about this story is, so I see the slide, and then I thought to myself, what was the default RPM on the Z06, thinking that's probably a little bit more than the Stinger anyway. Right. We go out to the GM display, and this is why being at the Bash is such a great thing. I'm talking to one of the engineers, and he says, you know what? Let me call the guy that did the actual launch control testing. So he calls him up on the phone, gets us the full range, the 3,500 to 5,000 RPMs. We think, okay, cool, that's done. Uh Uh-uh. This guy says, I still want to see it on the car. So he goes out to one of the Z06 display vehicles, starts it up. And he starts moving through the windows on the driver's information center and confirms that, yes, he sees the default setting there at the 4,500. Talk about service for a little blogger like me. That was pretty cool. Pretty exciting to get that news. We've got some other things coming out as well this week, so please stay tuned for that. It's so cool to meet these guys in person. You know, there's not really a whole lot of other brands that does like Corvette does. They go out, they meet the people that buy the cars, they listen to the feedback, and they listen to input, and then they put it into the car. And calling the guy that did the launch control, that's amazing. I mean, talk about service. You're absolutely right, buddy. Yep. Speaking of the National Corvette Museum, they announced a new education gallery, which is going to be very cool. Yeah, this is something they're going to do inside. It's more of an educational for children, but it's both for children and adults. So you can imagine some of their hands-on displays they'll have. They're actually repurposing space inside the museum because they've got some additional storage space now, moving the collections out to a outside building. I think they're going to repurpose some of the storage areas where that stuff currently is inside the museum. So again, it just shows the museum's growing as well as the ability, you know, if you can capture younger hearts they'll actually become corvette owners someday themselves so it's just a great way to start that process when kids are young absolutely right also i was disappointed to see this a c8 owner has been denied a warranty claim on a front lift because he put an aftermarket lowering kit on it that's sad well it is sad but you know what i heard the flip side of it i actually spoke with jeff strausser who is in charge of basically warranty claims he says there's just too many unknowns when you start messing with the magnetic ride systems on Corvettes. Each magnetic ride shock is $1,800 replacement. And he says, you know, to put these lowering collars on, you're basically dismantling the system, uninstalling parts of it, and then reinstalling. And there's just too many unknowns for the warranty. He says you modify a car during your warranty and it's all on you. We know that Corvette owners do want to make the ride their own, but there are some possible downsides to that, in which case is that you could be on the hook for thousands of dollars in repairs should something go wrong. 
Yep, that's something to think about as you start modifying your car. Boy, I'll tell you what, me, I can't keep away from it. So it's something that you really need to make sure you know about before you start modifying those cars, especially when you're getting into mechanical issues. Exactly. That's one thing to do different aero parts. You're into replacing regular carbon flash with carbon fiber. Right. None of that's going to avoid a warranty. But when you start messing with mechanical systems, yeah, that's another can of worms. And, you know, here's what Jeff said. It's not my money. I wish I could do it for everyone. But, you know, they've got standards and they've got certain rules and it's just what it is. It's unfortunate for this guy, but for you listening out there, they got a car on order. Or you've got your car and you're thinking about wanting to do some things. You might want to keep that in the back of your mind. Absolutely right. Keith, I've been a radio disc jockey here in Kansas City at the number one radio station, which is a classic rock radio station for 45 years, like a crazy fool. But this was an interesting story because Paul Stanley, the lead singer and guitarist for Kiss, is selling his VIN number one Stingray coming up at Barrett Jackson, Las Vegas. Yeah, this is an interesting story. I don't think he knew that he was getting VIN 1, so he obviously reached out to, he calls his friends, Mark Royce and Harlan Charles and all those great <laughs> people at Chevrolet. I think he probably reached out to him and said he was interested in a car, and they turned around and gave him the 2022 VIN 001 Stingray Convertible. This is a car now that's going to be offered at Bear Jackson, Las Vegas on June 30th through July 2nd. And with the car, you also get an autographed Ibanez Paul Stanley signature guitar with that. He did a video showcasing the car. There's some mixed comments I've seen from people thinking that he should keep the car that VIN 001 those the things are pretty hard to get these days right yeah but it's out there and he's going to sell it he does thank Chevrolet for the car that was made especially for him he says it's actually too nice and that it deserves to be because it's the VIN 001 deserves to be with somebody to really take care of it well and speaking of celebrities Jay Leno got to drive an NCRS 1954 Duntov Corvette that was so cool to see yeah the NCRS Duntov awards pretty hard to get it was brought into the Jay Leno garage by NCRS judge and Corvette restorer Mike McCluskey. A lot of people know Mike. He's got this 54. He actually purchased it from a friend who had passed away. His, his widow had, had the car. This car sat out in the backyard for 30 years. Wow. He went through it and it got one of the highest scores ever. Just took so long. It took over three years to restore because finding parts for the 54 are just so hard. They only made like 3,600 of them. The NCRS Stuntoff Award is not only do you get the car looking as it was when it came off the factory floor, but you have to do a performance test drive in which you have to do all these different things with the car. You have to show that it works, and that's how you get the Stuntoff Award. I love these segments on Jay Leno's Garage because he's just a kid like us who loves Corvettes, and then to be able to go out on the road and hear that 54, it's got the straight six blue flame in it. You know, to see him driving it around, it's just cool to see those early Corvettes on the road. If you have any inkling that you love classic Corvettes, I definitely would watch that segment. It was great. And I love that body style from 53, 54, and 55. To me, that is the true C1 Corvette. Yes, it is. Finally, Keith, this is an interesting story. A county sheriff raises his black-white Ford Explorer in pursuit of a vehicle, and it was a C7 Z06. Yeah, so if you go to the Bandamere Speedway in Morrison, Colorado, don't be surprised if a black and white is lining up in the lane next to you. This is the Jefferson County Sheriff who does participate. He's raced other cars previously, and it's a great experience. It's actually, we call it community outreach. You're having fun. You're meeting members of the community. You're not there to judge people, but to participate in the fun. And of course, on a drag trip, that's where safety is all the concern. What we really liked about this is that just before the starting light went green, the pursuit vehicle, he turned on the emergency lights and the siren for what we call the authentic police pursuit experience. And Steve, obviously that black and white was no match for the Z06. The Corvette ran the quarter mile in 11 and a half seconds at 121 miles an hour while the police explore finished at a leisurely 15.7 seconds at 89.5. <laughs> so no match there, but good to see the Jefferson County Sheriff out there doing some community engagement sounds like some fun well buddy thank you so much for being back on corvette today it was great to see you at the national corvette museum birthday bash and we'll talk again in two weeks yeah great seeing you too steve and all of our friends out there thank you again to the legions of corvette today podcast listeners out there saying hello and saying how much they like us and talking about the relationship you and i have it's, it is authentic we do enjoy each other's company and have a great time together looking forward to seeing you at the next show steve absolutely buddy and that is true we enjoy each other's company we have a lot of fun 
on. Oh, and coming up next week on Corvette Today, John Craman from the Mecham Auctions is going to be back. We're going to be talking about the 35th annual Dana Mecham Spring Classic coming up in Indianapolis here on Corvette Today. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be great. That Indianapolis auction is one of the big ones from Mecham every year. And boy, we saw the run list and there's going to be some good stuff going through there. So definitely stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today. And please be sure to tell your family, friends, and other Corvette enthusiasts about the Corvette Today podcast. And also thanks to our sponsors, Mid America Motor Works. Car show season is here. Get your Corvette ready by shopping over 60,000 Corvette-specific parts and accessories at mamotorworks.com. American Hydrocarbon at AmericanHydrocarbon.com. True Wealth and Company at RetireWithTrue.com. Also, Aerolari Wheels. Get $100 off your purchase with the new promo code CT111 at Aerolari.com. Also, Nova Stretch Bras. Use the code Corvette Today 15 and get 15% off your total purchase at NovaStretch.com. You've been listening to Corvette Today with Steve Garrett. If you'd like to contact Steve with any thoughts on the podcast or ideas for guests on Corvette Today, you can email him at stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. That's stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. Or connect with Steve on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using at stevegarrettdj. Thanks again for listening to Corvette Today.